This is your Weather Extreme video for Wednesday, January the 9th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, James Spann is away at Austin, Texas at the American Meteorological Society's annual meeting. Let's take a look at how the temperature has changed overnight. It's another one of those weird uh, kind of uh, traces that we see with uh, the maximum occurring yesterday afternoon. But a minimum, yes, a minimum occurred about uh, 4 a.m., but we didn't get much of a drop. Temperatures only getting down into the lower 50s across central Alabama. One of the reasons for that, of course, is the rain that moved in. And uh, mentioned that it would probably be getting into central Alabama by daybreak, and it certainly looks like it's pretty much on schedule. We're dealing with a rather complex storm system, but primarily at the surface, a low-pressure area along the um, Gulf Coast area of Texas. And that will be advancing northeastward here in the next uh, 36 hours fairly quickly. We also have a very uh, strong closed low at 500 millibars. It's roughly 20,000 feet in the atmosphere over northern Mexico. And that, too, will be ejecting out across the mid-Mississippi River Valley and also on a fairly quick um, path as it moves northeastward very quickly. Temperatures across the southeastern U.S. generally very mild as you see 50s and 60s. Still pretty chilly in the central Rockies and up in New England, but other than that it doesn't look so terribly bad for uh, mid to, or early January. Across our area, of course, we're dealing with an easterly wind primarily. Low uh, Temperatures generally in the lower 50s. We should uh, warm up into the 60s today. There's a look at uh, kind of a broader rain picture. You can see rain going all the way back into central Texas. And, of course, with that rain comes a number of flash flood watches. Those are the areas outlined in uh, or shown filled in in green. And then in the Rockies, we have a number of winter storm advisories, watches, and whatever going on up there, uh, warnings among those. For us, though the main threat is going to be that of uh, heavy precipitation we're looking at on the order of four to five inches on the lower mississippi river valley over the next five days and that primarily coming because we're going to have more or less a stalled frontal boundary along with a nice southwesterly flow aloft bringing lots of moisture out of the pacific and with that of course with uh, any of that we have the potential for some severe weather here's the day one outlook no slight risk area specified exactly but the sea text uh, on day one and the sea text on day two, both specifying areas where there is, are some conditions that are favorable for severe weather. But the problem is that the lapse rates in the atmosphere seem to uh, be a little too shy uh, to allow for severe convection to occur. And of course, uh, with all of this, it doesn't look like we're going to see anything in the way of discrete cells and supercell development. Uh, however, there's one little caveat here, and that is it appears that we might see um, the potential for more severe weather if our dew points are allowed to climb a little higher than what is expected. So we'll be watching that. Day three, no organized severe thunderstorms forecast at all. All right, the 06 EGFS model run, and there's our closed low at 500 millibars for this afternoon or at noontime. And uh, underneath that, we see a surface low over uh, or in the vicinity of Brownsville, just a little bit into the Gulf uh, area, according to the GFS. The closed low ejects out into the Red River Valley by <clears throat> midday on Thursday, and that surface low goes right along with it, bringing a lot of wet weather to the southeastern United States. The GFS and the European both in pretty good agreement on both the position and the strength of the surface low, as well as the position of all the precipitation. I said that the system ejects quickly, and this is uh, at uh, 18Z midday on Friday, and you can see that the closed low is now just a shadow of itself, just an open trough in the uh, approaching the eastern Great Lakes. The frontal position is up there. The low is hanging back over uh, Colorado. So the, uh, uh, the two models in relatively good agreement, uh, it, it uh, takes the weather with the main trough up into the Great Lakes area, but we see that the front drags back across our area, so we stay in a somewhat wet pattern. And the southwesterly flow, this is 18Z on Saturday, the southwesterly flow just continues. So the bottom line is we're forecasting relatively close to record temperatures with highs in the lower 70s for 
a number of days starting with uh, Friday into the weekend, and that is definitely uh, going to be very, very mild. Those temperatures close to 20 degrees above where we typically are for this time of year. Underneath that, of course, the moisture is uh, pretty uh, significant with that southwesterly flow bringing Pacific moisture and the GFS suggesting that we have shower chances again on Saturday and the European doing much the same thing since we can't really get that frontal boundary to push through completely at least not until later on in the period. The uh, southwesterly flow continues and we're dropping in uh, you can see another um, trough dropping into the, the overall long wave trough position that is over northern Mexico, but another one coming in through California. And of course, that still keeps us in a relatively um, moist atmosphere with the southwesterly flow. So uh, shower chances pretty much uh, staying with us as, as the systems eject out across uh, the area. By um, 132 hours or Monday, we still see that southwesterly flow, another uh, deep trough digging into uh, northern Mexico. And again, uh, the uh, Tuesday, that trough a little slow to come out. But you notice that there are little vorticity centers coming out. So we're going to have little disturbances that are going to come across all this moisture. And the bottom line is they're going to continue to keep us relatively wet uh, for the next, uh, well, about seven days for sure. And then we get out to the end of our seven-day period. And we do see a little bit... Uh, uh, change here with uh, the long wave trough moving just a little bit it appears but hanging back over northern Mexico we have a closed low but then we get a, a split flow with that hanging back in, in northern Mexico we get a nice trough moving through so that could move things and get us out of the rainy weather but it also cool things down and it'll be a, a bit of a, a, a shocker primarily because we're going to be 20 degrees above where we typically should be. So even if we get back to normal, that's a pretty big change. And you can see the 540 line coming down into the vicinity of Memphis around 180 hours, and that's Wednesday. All right, going out into voodoo country, and uh, the long wave trough position does seem to take more of a location over the eastern half of the country. So that certainly does uh, forebode a cool down in the temperatures for the southeastern U.S. Not terribly cold no no real extreme but again dropping from 20 degrees above uh, normal to or, or above average to uh, just average is quite a change and then finally out at the end it looks like we're jumping back at the 24th of january jumping back into this pattern we've seen over the last week or so with a, a nice trough uh, over the western u.s and and uh, at least a trough or closed low over mexico well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for today. We're on a one-a-day schedule with James out of town. I'll be filling in for him on the weather at ABC 3340 at 5, 6, and 10, and then focus at 4 at uh, around 4.30. Hope that you have a wonderful uh, day today and uh, that you'll tune back in tomorrow. Have a good day. Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham. <laughs>